Hi, I'm Becky. I'm your postpartum corrective exercise specialist. Thank you and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am so grateful that you're here watching this. So today let's unpack a question that people ask me on Instagram at my uh, Becky Choi underscore. If you haven't followed me, follow me there and subscribe. I have lots of uh, uh, mini educational exercises, motherhood and just like funny things. But I do have a questions here from this mom and I wanted to share with you. So I just uh, wanted to reach out for a bit of advice I have app separations after I had my first baby and I have since had another one congratulations and it's now worse due to the lack of support from my doctor I have been given physio which is the most unhelpful thing ever oh my gosh and actually this is not the first time I've ever heard of this uh, being unhelpful either from the doctor or the uh, physiotherapist so Unfortunately, I don't know, um, but that's like, could be another rant that I like, could be going on on another, another video. But um, I asked my physiotherapist today if I can do any other physical exercise for the rest of my body. And he had absolutely said no. <gasps> and I'm just doing breathing and pelvic floor exercises for now. My baby is eight months old, eight months, not eight weeks, eight months. And I'm desperate to tone my legs and I just feel, I just feel a bit, to feel like a bit like myself. Um, but I've been not told not to like this, like, can you see, see my face? <laughs> Not really sure if that's correct or not. What would you advise? Thank you. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for this message. And first of all, uh, like I was telling you, I'm just like, sometimes I get so angry. Why doctor or physio would not be helpful like that? Like sometimes I just get so frustrated when you hear comments from the doctor or physio like that. You are the patient. You're trying to get help, but they are not giving you any advice. They are not giving you anything. And not only that, they are stalling you from doing more. And she is eight months postpartum, not eight weeks, not not newly postpartum. So it's been a long time and she's been recovering well. Now, unless I'm wrong, like there's other medical condition that she has, but she did not mention it here. But just to do breathing exercises, just to do pelvic floor exercises without knowing that she's actually progressing or not, it's definitely not responsible and not helpful for her because she can be doing breathing exercises and that is something that I teach in my Tummy Warrior Coaching Program which is really helpful. However, we need to know is this working or not? Is she breathing right or not? Is she breathing along with the exercises that she's doing that, that is um, timing the exercises? Is she doing the pelvic floor exercises right? Right? Like you can only do these exercises for, for, such, for so long. Like you cannot do these exercises forever. And she's eight months now and she's been doing this, right? And that is not helpful. Like what would, what would be my advice, right? So I, my first advice would be to double check that she is actually breathing correctly, right? 360 breathing. And I do have another video that I teach about 360 breathing, how to actually do it and how, what it actually means to be breathing 360. I think that's the most important thing for her to learn is to start with that foundation 360 breathing. Now she's been doing it for a while. I, I would love for her to progressively move toward more exercises. Now do more core engagement exercises. In the comments, she mentioned she did some pelvic floor exercises. So I'm thinking, but maybe it's like a kegel, maybe it's a pelvic tilt, maybe it's a bridge. So those are traditional pelvic floor exercises. However, I also wanted to know if she has a tight pelvic floor or a loose pelvic floor, two totally different things. Now, I don't know if this visa ever did an internal exam for her and I can, uh, I can only imagine he or she didn't do it because she's just been not helpful at all because we need to know how her pelvic floor uh, health is. It could be very tight from having the baby pregnancy. Maybe she had a cesarean birth and maybe just, uh, just really tight down there because she's always tense and stressed. Or it could be very loose. Maybe she had a suction birth. She had a really difficult labor um, and to pass through the birth canal and maybe the baby is super big, right? It's really stretched at the tummy or throughout the pregnancy, she's carrying a low, a lot of pressure down there this could all cause to have a loose pelvic floor. Now we need to know which side it is because if she kept doing pelvic floor exercises 
and she has a tight pelvic floor. Those exercises would not help her. She needs to do more breathing. She needs to do more stretching. She needs to do more relaxation uh, technique incorporating into her exercises in order for her to strengthen the pelvic floor, reconnect with her pelvic floor from her breathing, from her exercises so that she can have a healthy and normal pelvic tone. So that will help her with healing her diastasis because our pelvic floor and our lower core and our belly, they all interconnected to each other. Now, on the other hand, if she has a loose pelvic floor where it's like just very loose, everything just kind of fall down, tampon doesn't fit in, she has a hard time holding her pee. So that could be a sign that she has a loose pelvic floor. So she needs to do more strengthening pelvic floor exercises, at, at which point she could incorporate more of the diastasis rectal exercises and then to cardio and then to strength training. They, we need to track the progress. So her physio needs to have a plan, a tracker, to know that she is actually improving and not to just say, no, you cannot do this. No, you cannot do that. You can only do this. You can only, it's, it, it's, how long is it going to take? Couple of years? Like, how, what, what, how do we know? Like, how, how, how does she know, right? As a regular mom, you have no time for guessing. You have no time to just like t thinking that this would work by gauging how we look outside because it, a lot is happening inside of our body and that is something that we cannot see. So it needs to be assessed whether it is by yourself, right? You should check your diastasis, whether it is closing, whether it is um, the depth is um, more narrow now and more more shallow and the, and the gap is closing up or not. We need to know these. And taking picture would be helpful measuring measuring the waistline would be helpful but also just the kind of biofeedback is she getting stronger is she able to manage her core pressure right core pressure like meaning you're bulging or you're doming when you're exercising does she understand right these these would be the type of things that i would be looking for right so she needs to know how she's doing in order for her to move forward it's just like you cannot run before you walk, right? You, you need to do it lay bricks by bricks, laying a strong foundation and then move forward. Sorry, my mic dies so you might hear the mic being a little bit different. So we need to know how she's doing, whether she is progressively doing well with breathing and engagement. And then she can do a lot more exercises, whether it is cardio, strength training exercises, because she wanted to tone her legs. And legs are good exercises. There could be a lot of exercises that she could incorporate legs and the, uh, the diastasis engagement core exercises too together because the beauty of healing the DR and the beauty of healing the postnatal body is that she can incorporate any exercises as long as she's breathing right as long as her uh, body posture is correct and she's engaging it correctly she could turn any exercises into a traditional um, workout into a head workout leg workout upper body workout you name it but but in terms of like specifically like okay i wanted to lift heavy weights because i want to tone my leg or i wanted to do tons of squats um i would just be a bit cautious so that just wanted you to go back into okay what is working what's been working are those uh, kind of like checklists check like the pelvic floor breathing engagement are those all good that will set you up for much better results but something that you could start is just like going for a walk and getting some seven to ten thousand steps a day so that would be something that you can start doing now now, and that could help you to tone the leg, right? That could help you to burn some calories. Those are low impact exercises. Um, then you can start from there. So I hope this video is helpful for you. Um, if you have any comment or question, please comment it down below. Maybe I will pick your questions and answer it in my next video. Follow me on Instagram, Becky Choi underscore, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.